Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast with me, your host, Imperial Dane. Today I have for you a one versus one on Langra. Yes, indeed, a Langra-tastic match for you, ladies and gentlemen, my wonderful viewers. And of course, I hope you will find it interesting, exciting, and fascinating, and perhaps a bit even educating on the topic of World War One. No, not World War One, but of comedy theaters. Not sure where World War One came into it, but let's try to ignore that bit. Nonetheless, sort of nice map, sort of divided into two halves, a bit like Anger Will, but unlike Anger Will, it's not like one is hugely clear. There's still going to be Sambo cars, some things can block the line of fire, buildings and such, but at the same time it is perhaps slightly more open than the other half, which is more bocars like with buildings and whatnot. Of course it creates a series of interesting movement situations with harassment where you can sort of run around all the bocars, hit the enemy in the back where you can't really spot it until it's too late in some cases and of course strategic points are rather perilously close to all of these situations of course means you can you can sort of sneak through cut off and then run away again usually in some cases without taking too much damage in the process resources are nicely divided although there's a difference here in munitions medium here but high here there are buildings much more covering here, but then again, they can be much more easily circumvented or overcome due to the Bukhars being awfully close to them. Of course, you can essentially sneak up and lob a grenade if there's some heavy machine guns hiding inside there. But let us go look at our opponents in the southern corner. We are seeing Bergstrand of the 708th Bodenständige Grenadier Division or Infanterie Division. Opposing them shall be Rommelslayer. Yes, indeed, Rommelslayer will be having a bit of fun today. 4th Infantry Division for Uncle Sam, Apple Pie, and Mother-in-Laws. Yes, he's evil. No, he's not. Nonetheless, let's get right down to it. Let us see what shall be going on here if the start button commands, or obeys my command. Paris going up. There my quarters going up so far. Nothing utterly unusual at all. Again, it's not like the Wehrmacht can do a lot else, it's that, or building nothing at all, or getting up four barracks. But that's about it. The Americans, of course, can get the weapon support center, but that's usually not the best start, because again, then you're lacking the infantry to support, to really have you support units support, and that, of course, can easily create a lot of trouble. I mean, support units are there to support your infantry. Not the other way around, and that of course is something some people seem to understand because then they're sort of basically thinking, hey, I've got a heavy machine gun, that can suppress, that can kill, hooray, I'll just get a lot of those, and then they sort of casually forget that they can easily get outflanked by infantry in most cases, just get smoked up or mortared up with a bit of time. But Volkskrank is on survey, in this case probably representing some Ost Battalion troops. Basically, Soviet troops taken from the prisoner camps and basically given the chance of fighting in the German army or continuing to rot away in the Russians or those camps there. So it was a bit of a no-brainer choice that. Munitions point seized. Not entirely sure how they would have been equipped with Russian weaponry or with German, for that matter. A bit unsure of that actually. Anyhow, strategic point being secured by the. Volksgrenadieren, as we'll just keep referring to them as to keep things a bit sane. Rifleman sneaking through in the center, in the east, engineers are marking about, and in the west, engineers are marking about as well. So infantry forces being awfully close to each other. MG42 on the way, not a second Volksgrenadier team. This is sort of, again, the sort of thing I want to avoid because that could mean you can easily get flanked. In fact, looks like Rumslayer might be deviating here, not continuing towards the center, but now heading towards the west. Perhaps hoping to do a bit of harassment. MG42 ready for the fatherland. And will it be heading towards the center? It seems so. Engineers heading now towards the central area, but running straight into the false guys with the rifles. Engineers to continue apparently undaunted rifle now arriving as well to aid the situation. How shall this go? Of course, engineers moving in within range with their grease guns. MG42 setting up. Setting up. And there we go, opening up on the riflemen, suppressing them, and Rumsleer picks up on the queue, moving his other riflemen who are behind there, and of course, sadly, Mr. Bergstrand is a bit unawares of this development from the 4th Infantry Division. Riflemen flanking about, MG-42, 
trying to turn around, but will it be in time? Or will Rumbleslayer be able to get into heavy cover, in which case the effects of the MD-42 will be nullified. One down, but the MD-42 guns are now in quite a bind because they are themselves in no cover. That means they are much easier targets. And he needs to get them out of there. Oh, the MD-42 crew cleared out. Second false minute team on the way, but Rifleman moving in to take the MG42. One man left. Oh, the uh, Rifleman team was lost. MG42, though, also lost. That's going to be a bit of a loss at the same time to Mr. Bergstrand. And certainly, an MG42 in the hands of the Americans is going to prove quite a problem. In particular, since it's going to make it that much harder for his false gun to move about if they suddenly get under fire from one of their own weapons. Rifleman, though, will have to be retrained. Replaced more precisely. Others getting reinforced. MD42 also probably going to get reinforced. Thus to aid the American effort. And there we go, trying to retake this point since it was taken by the Americans, thus cutting them off from the fuel. Good harassment by Romsley, although in the east, Bergstrand is pushing onwards. Another MD42. A medic station immediately going up as well. Getting ready for the long haul already, not even five minutes into the game, this is good to see. And at the same time close to the front, yet at the same time not quite exposed. Fulton is taking a point. Rifleman with MG42 support advancing. Fulton is getting the devil out of there. And the MG42 opens up on the Fulton Grenadiers. Not doing much though, the Fulton Grenadiers just no. There we go, getting suppressed. And German MG42 fires off on the Rifleman, suppressing both teams. MG crew on me. Scoring one kill already. Hooray. <coughs> MG42 and a second MG42. This is again the sort of more passive approach, I suppose. And he has, in fact, already gone defensive. Not even five minutes into the game. And he's gone defensive. That's quite uh, defensive, I suppose. We can already sort of suspect what sort of things he has in mind. Not the thing I'd recommend. Again, defensive whilst giving you some nice defensive advantages. Then again, can sort of cut you off from actually being able to do anything on the offensive. Bartman getting shot up by heavy machine gear. So I'm here to take fire. And this point here taken by the Germans but might now soon be lost to the Americans once more while this point is being taken by them and mine. Good move there Rommelslayer. <coughs> you might not hold it for long but you can at least make it sure the Germans are going to have to pay for it in lives in blood to take it back. Medics moving in to pick up the wounded. We're losing a sector. MG42 setting up. The American MG42 flying away at the German Volksgrenadiere. Suppressing them rather swiftly. Rifleman sneaking through here, taking up position there, and of course perhaps getting some increased line of sight to sort of figure out what to do. Build getting into a building can in fact rather help with getting an idea of what's going on, and of course can be used for reconnaissance purposes. Not porpoises. Anyhow, fuel point being secured. In fact, a lot of territory being secured by the Americans, even going for the other fuel point. This is very nasty. We are seeing a Kampfkraft sensor up. <coughs> rather interesting, rather bold, a bit of a... Well, I'm not going to say it's a good thing. Yes, he might have killed one on rifle team from Rumsley, but there's a bit of a problem with this. He's not seen any BARs either, and of course, in fact, Rumsley could go straight for an M8, in which case Bergstein, who has gone heavily on the Tier 1, having bought three MG 42s of course, one is lost. And now going for a Kampfkraft Center with ve two veterans, might end up binding him in the arse. I mean, one M8, and this could easily end up in the favor of Rumsley, I suspect. But now the Creek Barracks is on the way. And Veteran G1 for infantry is good. Plus, Veteran G1 for support units like the MG42 increases the accuracy quite a bit. Plus, it makes them reload faster. But still, the accuracy is the important bit. It's really going to help them kill some Americans quite swiftly. In particular, if they sort of the type to fire up and run around out from the open. In which case, they'll be suffering heavy casualties. But, of course... Heavy harassment from Rommelslayer and Bergstrand is sort of forced to constantly run about with his units rather than fighting to seize territory back from the Americans, which is rather putting him at quite the disadvantage. 
And of course now he has to react to this as well, while he has to send other units out on their own towards the west, which of course Romsler can then proceed to pick off, which looks like might be happening. Sneaky that. But the Creek Barracks is up, pack 38 on the way, he's probably going to say I'm he all to expect the M8, and that's a good thing at least. But at the same time, he probably needs more infantry. MP42 opening up on the right, and there we go, firing away with increased accuracy. MP40 quick force gun is charging in. Rathman getting shot up on retreat. And there we go, Pioneers forced away from the west as the counter force from Romerslayer. Lots of engineers with flamethrowers and some Rathman move in. Banker going up, although this is the sort of frontal, hey look at me, I have a banker sort of position, which is the sort of thing I like to advocate against, because that's basically just going to present a big fat target to your opponents. And there we go, sneaking up on the MD-42. Rifeman running straight out into the open, getting shot up, and more MP40s for the false gun is thus meaning in fact he has absolutely no rifles to actually help him. Which of course means he doesn't really have anything to sort of support the MP40s on the advance. Without except those MD42s, which can be a bit dicey. Banker is up, and I suspect a mortar is ready. There we go, going for the support center. Good move there. And now beginning to bombard Mr. Axland's positions. Bunk already coming under heavy fire. In fact, taking quite a bit of damage. He might want to cancel that upgrade. I said cancel it, mate. Your bunker is not going to make it out of there alive. Volkswagen is moving in, hoping to save things. But getting suppressed by the MD-42. Though it looks like they might be able to clear it out. And take it back from the dust of the armies. Bunker just barely safely up, but it needs to be repaired immediately. And he needs to counterattack those Americans in the west. This is not looking too good. Now Airborne has arrived, the 101st Airborne Division, moving in to support the 4th Infantry Division in the fight against the 708th. <coughs> MG42 moving in to stop this work here. Now again, our Grenadiers on the way. That's going to give him some at least three infantry teams and will certainly help in retaking territory, which is what he desperately needs. He, as you might have noticed, he's rather penned in with a rather small bit of land. And again, having gone defensive isn't really helping him in sort of moving backwards and taking back some territory. Or I mean, turning things around. Mortar team going up again, ready to bombard. And I suspect that Medic Bangra is going to be the primary target again. No, it's the Pioneers trying to take the central victory point. American infantry advancing in the east. Only a simple team of Pioneers. Oh dear. But Grenadiers are ready on the field. <coughs> False Clan is ready as well. Pioneers coming under fire as Rathman and Engineers move in on them both with Minesweepers. Although interestingly enough there's been very little in mining from Bergstrand. An airborne versus... <coughs> Defensive zone going to be interesting and there we go right in front of the MG42 with the increased veterancy and the Rathman getting absolutely torn apart. The airborne as well, oh dear. Grenadiers though, look, no, they're still there, and the airborne are now getting absolutely torn to bits. And firing up, just retreat, mate. No need to fire up right there. And now the bunker is once more coming under fire. MG42 might be cleared out again. Oh dear, riflemen being quite the threat. <coughs> once more an attempt at securing territory right there. Engineers with flame flows hanging inside the building. <coughs> And Rumsley, no, there we go, looks like he's firing away on the Medic Bunker to finish it off. Again, that's one of the reasons you want to be careful with placing out your Medic Bunkers in the open. It's going to be pretty much an easy target and quickly identified. I mean, here might have been a better choice, or perhaps here, not right out in the middle of a bloody open field. <coughs> And there we go, 150 men, manpower and 50 munitions right down the drain without really doing anything for the fatherland. Not good handing of that at all. False Clan is now moving in to stop that mortar team once more. Airborne and Rifleman ready to put a stop to that movement. Tank Depot going up, my goodness, Rumsley are being rather cheeky, aren't we? False Clan is with the MP40 is firing away, cutting down some airborne, having an ice day with it. Although taking some losses as they are in light cover as the opponent is in much heavier cover for the most part and are quite outnumbering them. MG42 hiding here. Other forces getting reinforced. Grandiers need to move out. Oh wait, they are. 
another attempt at seizing territory here in the west, but it looks like the false grenadiers were stopped in it by engineers. And where are the grenadiers? But a German mortar has arrived. Grenadiers are there. Apparently the German mortar team has better things to do than fire, perhaps. Then again, it could be waiting for the American mortar sort of sp show itself. And a reconnaissance run. Good move there by Rumslayer. And we just sort of got an idea of what he saw right there. Good move. Again, a reconnaissance run can really help you figure out what your opponent's up to. And what he's go got going in his space. So that's actually a nice thing to do there. MG42 once more setting up to cover this area. But the engineers are seizing it back rather quickly. Again, the rather defensive approach here by Mr. Backstone is rather helping Rumsland being able to really keep harassing him because Backstone is continually not really able to sort of take back things and act and is constantly forced to react. But now Mortars exchanging fire looks like oh dear Flamethrowers moving into flank German MG42 not looking in good position neither is the German Mortar oh dear American Mortar though knocked out but so is the German. Both mortars are gone. Engineers running away. Grenadiers heading back, perhaps to reinforce this bunker. But again, he's placing it out in the open. Bergstrom, Bergstrom. Again, be careful where you place your bunkers. You don't want to place them out in the bloody open. And again, oh, there we go. Engineer team cut down as we're trying to lay down a mine. And. Where's all that mortar fire coming from? Odd. Oh well, but now a Sherman is on the way. Packford hit is ready to protect, but this is really going to make things a lot harder for Bergstrand, who is constantly losing units and is constantly building bunkers, which are too easy targets. He's not being aggressive enough. He's not really able to seize enough territory, which is really helping Romslayer quite swiftly. Another mortar being recruited. Germans are seizing territory from us. Grenadiers having re-seized the granite mortar. What will happen? Airborne getting stopped by the MG42 with its increased urgency. Bunker still there. Now getting bombarded by Romsley again. Airborne is getting slaughtered by the MG42 in fact. Rather moving into flank. But now getting suppressed themselves. No. Wait there we go retreating. Rumsler's mortar getting counter mortared and again that's sort of the nice thing you want to keep moving so don't get mortared yourself Grenadiers charging right at the infantry veterans 2 now themselves I'd rather at this stage at least actually recommend it not veterans 2 but another grenadier team or perhaps a storm armory German and get something out of that but really he needs to be able to quickly get something and turn the bloody tide he needs to be aggressive he needs to get moving Otherwise, things are going to look pretty bad. <coughs> Sherman on the field, 50 cal machine gun ready. Trier Center going up. Interesting, and has there been any rifleman pulled together from that medic bunker, I wonder? Yes, indeed, there has. And now, those false gunners are going to get a nasty surprise. Sherman moving in, one down already. Panzerfaust launched, but that did little alongside those MP40s, but at least the Panzerfaust did a little bit of damage. Bunker still out in the open, a bit of waste of manpower. Apparently the LMG-42 up for the Grenadiers. Another reconnaissance run. Grenadiers need to retreat. Airborne rifle advancing. And a strafing run right here, clearing out the mortar. MG-42 striding away, covering the Grenadiers as they pull back. MP40s moving in. Romsler's infantry is getting torn up. And a vicious field of death of MG42 Farn and MP40s. Even the Grenadiers could support it. Oh dear, wait, one is down to re recall his rifle fire. So far, the MG42 team has actually not been really been able to fire. Rifleman getting torn up. Airborne charging into the midst of all of this. And the Pack 38. Oh dearie me, exposed to the airborne. One more shot by the recall his rifles. And this Pack 38 could be out, giving the Sherman of Romsley a free reign. <coughs> oh dear, oh dear, will the Pack 38 make it? Nope, Pack 38 cleared out and creeping through here. 
Once more, Bergstrand's defenses has utterly collapsed. And let's just have a pause for the mid-game analysis. What is the current situation? Well, pretty bad for Bergstrand and the 708th Borden Stendinger. <coughs> oh. But of course, what is the sort of problem he made here? Well, it he had a bit too much heavily on the tier 1, a bit too many MD42s, I mean he lost one and then he got two others, I mean... He's saving himself too much in the manpower division, more particularly the infantry sort of section, and that's really making it easier for Romsley to sort of continue to take territory from him. And Mr. Baxter on the other hand is having a lot harder time taking it back. Because Romsley is constantly putting onwards from all points, lots of engineers with flamethrowers, mortars, airborne, all that. And Bergstein is sort of constantly sort of either hanging about with his infantry, not really doing much, or he's sort of trying to retake what he's got and then he's being attacked elsewhere. I mean, things are not really going well for him and he's not really doing much to sort of shore up his defenses. No barbed wire, no sandbags, and he's placing his bunkers out in the bloody open. No mines either. I mean, he's making some very terrible defensive decisions considering he's gone defensive doctrine. And again, even if you've gone defensive, you need to show some aggression, you need to show some backbone, and he's not. Which is again not really helping him. Of course, we'll have to see if you turn things around with that. For example, Grenadier with an MG42, although I'm a bit doubting it. Again, I might be proved wrong. But he needs something to really turn things around. He needs to take the initiative and go against Romslayer. Otherwise, he's going to lose. Romslayer, on the other hand, just needs to be careful and not suddenly lose a lot of units. And he's pretty much going to be safe. Because currently he's holding the initiative, he's holding most of the map, he's pretty much holding everything. So let's get right back to it. <coughs> My throat sounding a bit rusty it seems. Another bunker lost, that's 300 manpower lost on bunkers again. That was a grenade team he could have gotten from that instead. Perhaps see some Terry and thus made it safer for a future bunker. German mortar firing away. Apparently a fresh mortar. And another one stolen by the Americans. Yes indeed, now they're holding a German mortar. The American mortar was a 60mm, although they did have their own 81mm. But that was more actually on a battalion level, whereas the 60mm was on a company level. So there you go. Fun fact right there, in terms of organization. Grandier's advancing with the MG42s, but they have to be careful. Oh dear, get into cover. Hand effect equipped, but again, no use without cover. Engineers got shot out a bit, but they're charging at the Sherman. No, no dear me. Getting suppressed by the 50 caliber machine gun. And taking heavy losses. Retreat, Grenadiers, retreat. Oh no. I hope there's a pack 38 coming and now looks like he might be making an attempt at sort of establishing something right here in the eastern flank. Airborne getting shot up. Our front lines are collapsing. Mortar firing away for the fatherland. American defense is pretty strong here. Two mortars now, both recruit. Now a 30 caliber machine gun moving into the mix as well. It's not going to be fun to be back front and will he be making any attempts at sort of movements in the west to retake territory there? Or well, at least I know get something. I mean, you could get a storm army now because he has the LMG42, which of course means he's got this assault phase, which of course means he could get a storm army. He could get some naval weapons. He could get a stook. He could get an armored car. He could get something. An airborne right running around in the open, getting shot up. MP40s, MG42s. Another strafing run, doing some damage to the MG42s. Ramsley's airborne retreating. Postgrain is out in the middle of everything, getting shot up by the M4 Sherman, oh dear. Mortar rounds flying in, this is not looking good. Postgrain is charging in on the mortar, forcing it away. <coughs> Another bunker, Bergstrand, Bergstrand. You absolute brickhead. Do not place bunkers out in the open, you need to watch the propaganda cards and then you need to learn that very, very important bloody lesson. Fulskan is getting shot up now by the 50 cal machine gun. Sherman getting shot up by the pack 38. But the veterans who won and the increased speed might see it off. There we go. Into safety behind the Bocage. 
And of course this makes this position a bit difficult to actually defend because your opponent can sneak up through here or run behind there. So Bergstrand is not really taking up the position that is most conducive to his victory. And of course now immediately Romersley is shifting his defensive sort of percent of very thick defensive line which is going to make it very hard for Bergstrand to break out. I mean in these cases you are not supposed to run into a brick wall now. The MD-42 is out in the open. Oh dear. And cleared out immediately. BAR's now up for the rifleman. Again sometimes the key is to sort of shift the entire axis of attack and attack from somewhere else. Thus forcing your opponent to shift his defenses. Which is something Romsley actually excels at. Sadly it seems that Bergstrand is anything but good at that. First gun is with MP40's moving in. Tearing up the Americans on the assault. Quite a bit of automatic fire right there. Mortar rounds flying. Pioneer team getting cut up. Registered artillery barrage is all he has. That and for the foul land, but he's not even using that. I mean, this is not really looking very well for Bergsand. Pack 38 firing away at the Ravman, forcing them away. Volkskrein is advancing. Grenadiers are still alive but now hiding over here. Apparently without a purpose, despite having a panzer check and an LMG 42. I'd certainly not recommend equipping an infantry team with two heavy Action. weapons. So the that's going to increase the chances of those getting lost or even in the hands of the enemy. American mortar now firing away. Force guns out in the open and veteran C2 force guns do have a slight resistance to suppression. But even then that's not going to be a sort of idea to sort of run them out in the open. Ma German base now getting bombarded it seems. Mortar firing away. Sneaky Rommel's there. LMG MG42 firing away. That ground is not moving in to put a stop to that mortar. MG in there not getting bombarded. Where is it? Fire on all sides. Rommel's layers mortar there going completely unstopped. Fultz ground is getting reinforced. We're losing territory. And the Grenadiers apparently seem now to get the idea that perhaps they need to take out the mortar about time back strand. One can definitely see why you are in charge of a Bordenständige force rather than a proper Grenadier force. The Bordenständige forces were among the lowest quality troops and that was basically part of the German military doctrine when it came to actually sort of organizing infantry and they actually had sort of different levels of quality troops. The Bordenständige Grenadier Division Infantry Division was pretty much amongst the lowest. They were basically only for defensive purposes. They were given a s theoretically strong position and then basically ordered to hold that no matter the cost. A nice idea certainly, but of course troll was in Normandy. Most of those defensive positions were pretty rubbish. Never mind confusing. So that only made things harder for them. Some thought alright I suppose. But again, others did not. It certainly didn't help that any decent troops that might have been appeared were immediately transferred to the Eastern Front. So they also had a bit of a lack of cohesion problems. Plus they were sort of haphazardly equipped with a mix of Russian, Czechoslovakian and French artillery for example. Amongst all other things and not generally equipped very well. Volkskan is gunning down those riflemen though. And a forward barracks up right there, sneaky that. Austin flak pans up, apparently for second panzer division has been able to provide some firepower. Lots of firepower here, lots of BAS of the 50 caliber. Mortar not really there, but now the Austin is moving in. And looks like a Hellcat is ready, anticipating any sort of armored adventures by Bergstrand. Good move there. As you probably ought to expect in the uh, Pend up opponents cases probably might be going for some armor to punch through. Not a bad idea, but then the Austrian is not really the best candidate for that. Volkskrein is moving forwards. 30 cal machine gun moving away, but now moving up to support and on the list in another manner. Manic van Grab again. Rifleman and engineers getting slaughtered. Rifleman team could be cut up. But now the 50 caliber is getting the position on the Volkskrein and Grenadiers. Apparently another Grenadier team has been sent out. Ostman needs to move in and clear out that MG42. Bergstrand, move in your panzer when you bloody well has it. And the strafing gun and all of this clumped up infantry. Bergstrand, Bergstrand. Oh dear, you don't seem to be learning. You certainly don't want to be clumping up when your opponent has a strafing run. He's certainly shown that he's willing to use it. 
Now the Hellcat is on the prowl. Flag Panzer, not quite so lucky. Medic Panzer once more getting bombarded. Pack 38 owning up on the Hellcat. MG42 needs to get away. The bunker that's collapsing will take the infantry in it with it. And there we go. Backstrand not being quite on his toes. And Grenadiers moving about here on their own with the LMG42 and the Panzerjack not at the thick of fighting where they might be able to do something with that Panzerjack and that LMG42, but no, seizing territory. I mean, ugh. Not really being me the best opinion of Backstrand. Pack 38 getting cleared out. I mean, he had a decent idea, but the sort of execution of it sort of fell through. Oswin once more moving in. Recall this rubbish flying away. Morton needs to get away. Volkskan is marching in. And Airborne getting absolutely shot up. Oswin out of control. Oh dear. And again, climbing up his troops. Morton flying away. Ostwind no more. Grenadiers apparently just harassing here in the west. Which is certainly not all bad. Panzer IV now on the way. He probably ought to have gotten that in the first place rather than an Ostwind. Grenadiers seizing territory there. They could get stopped by Sherman. No, the Sherman alongside a lot of other units. Lots of riflemen. Lots of other business moving in there. Volkskan is advancing right out in the open. Coming under fire. Getting shot up. Panzer on the Grenadiers here. Mortar team getting shot up, but will they be able to stop the Sherman Grenadiers? False Grenadiers absolutely getting murdered. Oh, Backstrand, why do you insist on attacking across open ground again? Don't do that. I mean, if you really sincerely must use smoke, you have a mortar. Lay down some smoke cover. Oh dear, those Grenadiers might be lost. Retreating. False Grenadiers now left. Riveman team trained from the bunker. And what do we have here? Grenadiers forgotten. Oh dear, getting shot up, getting suppressed. Oh no. Oh dear, things are utterly collapsing for Bergstein at this stage. MG42 firing away from the wreckage of the Ostwind. Nice heavy cover there. And there we go, Panzer come back and feel moving in. Rifleman dead. And Americans quickly to seize back what Bergstein's Grenadiers seized. And this building once more coming under fire from the mortar. Panzer IV moving westwards. Grenadiers fully reinforced. Could move in to support that Panzer IV. No, the Panzer IV is no. Now what? I wonder. They were, there we go. Panzer moving in after those riflemen. And there we go. Hitting. Killing. And again, Bergstrand is sort of just climbing up and attacking across open ground. Again, not the sort of thing you want. And of course, immediately coming under heavy fire. Sherman blasting away. Veterans 2 and of course, a strafing run, pinning and suppressing. Need to retreat. I said retreat, damn you. And again, another pointless assault from Bergstrand. And another bunker. I might as well say this is GG. There's no bloody way he's going to come back from that. He's absolutely wasting his resources. And of course, that's, I think, is the one of the main issues with this match. Of course, Bergstrand utterly blows away his resources. I mean, all right, he had lost that MG42 on the first run. That's unfortunate. It happens. But again, that's why I always go for two folks going to team first and then the MG42. That way you can always ensure to keep my MG42 somewhat safe. At least that's how I find it. But no, he didn't. He lost it and then he got another two MG42s, thus meaning a rather heavy tier one in the defensively more static manner, which of course wasn't really helping as Romsley kept harassing running about, seizing territory. He needed to go on the counter movement, he couldn't. He, and he even went defensive, thus really locking himself within that very narrow sort of line of choices he had and that really wasn't helping him I mean he kept sort of compounding it bunkers out in the open quickly knocked out I mean he could have perhaps 
placed him here, had a bit more longer survivability, and thus get some grenadier teams out of that way. But he didn't. I mean, he kept making those mistakes, and he kept clamping up his infantry. False grenades with MP40s. I mean, there was a lot of tactical, strategic mistakes made right here. I mean, you could sort of see he wasn't a bad player as such. I mean, he wasn't a complete novice, but somehow he kept making a bevy of unfortunate decisions that really didn't help him in the long run. No barbed wire, no sandbags, no mines, kept placing right here despite knowing that Romsler kept loving running around here and hit him in the rear. Bunkers out in the open repeatedly and again clumping about repeatedly despite strafing runs and then he was much too late in getting anything. And of course he never shifted the axis from here to here which again was a main problem. Good move and good handling by Romsler in general of course sneaking about here very good move, in fact, constantly a bit of mines, but again, the sort of aggression from Romsley constantly keeping Bergeson off his feet, unable to really get a good grip with the MG42s, really helped Romsley in the long run. So, there you go. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, why not subscribe to tell your friends? And if you didn't, well, why not send in a replay of your own? This is Imperial Lane saying cheers.